this ninth video, we'll discuss typical approaches to setup, control, and monitoring of electric actuators. First, we'll discuss typical approaches to setting up and commissioning electric actuators. We'll move from basic methods to those with increasing ease of use. The most basic way to set up and commission an electric actuator is by directly interfacing with it. In a non-intrusive, intelligent-style actuator, this is handled directly through the user interface, and because it is non-intrusive, does not require the enclosure to be opened, nor the internal circuitry to be exposed to the environment. On a conventional-style actuator, the setup is done at the unit by opening the cover and adjusting limit switches, dip switches, etc. This setup is done with basic hand tools and is straightforward. Setting up a single actuator directly through the user interface or inside the enclosure is easy enough when only one or two actuators need to be commissioned. But when many units need to be set up, using DCM Link software, available free of charge from Emerson, may be an easier approach. DCM Link, or Diagnose, Configure, Monitor software, can be used on a Windows-based laptop or tablet and can be connected to the actuators via wired connection or Bluetooth for setup and configuration. Most all of the functionality that can be set at the actuator can also be configured through the software. Additionally, DCM Link allows configurations to be saved and then copied and pasted into additional actuators, making setup and commissioning of multiple units simple and streamlined. Next, we'll introduce you to how electric actuators are controlled. Again, we'll begin with the most basic and work toward methods with greater ease of use and control. The simplest method to control an electric actuator is locally, directly on the actuator itself. As we talked about in an earlier video, where pneumatic or hydraulic technology requires a valve operating system to function, an electric actuator already contains all the controls required. Basic open, close, stop controls are prominently featured on the actuator and are available either standard from the factory or as a readily available option. Of course, if the valve and actuator is mounted in a remote location, local control may not be that convenient. That leads us to the next approach, which is by far the most common method for controlling electric actuators in the world today, discrete wiring for remote control. This method is where multiple pairs of wires are connected between the actuator and the control system to provide control and feedback between the actuator and the control room. These signals are in the form of analog inputs, analog outputs, discrete inputs, and discrete outputs. For example, there may be a discrete signal for open, another for close, and another for stop. A 4 to 20 milliamp analog loop may be wired to provide modulating input to the actuator, and another 4 to 20 milliamp loop may be wired to provide feedback to the control room on the position of a valve. A significant amount of control can be achieved through the use of discrete wiring. However, the downside to this approach is the cost of wiring and installation. That leads us to the last approach to controlling electric actuators, which is through network control. Typically, networks run on a single pair of wires and may communicate via Modbus, Fieldbus, Hart, Profibus, or other common industrial protocols. Wiring costs are lower as multiple actuators can be put onto the same network loop. Rather than running all loops back to the control room, some customers prefer to install a control link network master in order to offload some of the burden from the DCS system. We will talk about the control link more in the next video, but basically it allows control, configuration, and diagnostics of up to 250 actuators from a single interface. Last in this video is approaches to monitoring electric actuators. We'll talk about them in order of increasing actuator and valve intelligence provided. The most basic method for monitoring electric actuators is locally, directly on the actuator itself. On an intelligent model, this is through information and warnings on the graphical display. Whereas on a conventional unit, it may be through simple lights on the unit. The next approach to monitoring electric actuators is remotely, through discrete wiring. This methodology is similar to the approach we discussed in the control section, where specific relay outputs like valve open, 
valve closed, jam valve, etc., are wired directly from the actuator to the control room. Again, this is a very common way actuators are monitored in the industry today. That being said, electric actuators store a wealth of data and there are better ways to extract that valuable information. Primarily, we do that through our free DCM link software. Error codes, event logs, and torque profiles are easily accessible via this software. We can connect DCM link to an actuator in a local situation via Bluetooth or wired connection. Additionally, we utilize DCM link to monitor actuators remotely via the DCM link snap-on to AMS device manager from Emerson. This snap-on software provides the same functionality of the DCM link standalone version conveniently located within the AMS suite. We hope this video was helpful in providing you a basic understanding of how electric actuators are set up, controlled, and monitored. We only had time to provide an overview to these approaches, so if you'd like to get more information or speak to an Emerson expert, please don't hesitate to contact us. Now that you have a good understanding of valve actuation and electric actuators, in our next video, we will introduce you to the Bettis Electric Portfolio.